In this video, I'm sharing my first five tips for street photography. I'm not against opportunistic shots, but in general, I start by looking for interesting scenes. I think that good backgrounds are essential in street photography. It may be good architecture, shadows, shapes, lighting, or even color tones. In short, anything that creates the basis of a good backdrop, much like a stage play. And I like the idea that people are giving a context to a public space, where they are, what they are doing, and so on. When I look at a lot of other street photography, many are producing pictures where the person is clearly the subject and they happen to be in public. I try to create a relationship between the person or people with the backdrop, so they enhance or indeed make the story of the image. As I've said in a previous video, it's my belief that Henri Cartier-Bresson often used this principle. He seemed to find a scene and waited for and used people to give that context, scale, and an organic human element to the scene. So having selected my place, I then work out where I want the person or people to be to give meaning to the whole. I get myself into position and wait for it to come together. I think being observant is important, and I am. I scan the whole view in front of me. I know I do this because I often find money. Finding coins under seats or on the pavement is not uncommon. By scanning what's going on, I get to see the possibilities for scenes. I also get to notice interesting shapes, where the sun is shining, where shadows are falling, interesting people, objects, and so on. So by looking up, down, left, right, near and far, I can maximize the chance of capturing something if it's going to happen and come together while I'm there. This tip is very unlikely to be for everybody, but nevertheless, I think it's worth sharing. I use manual exposure and manual focus, and I do this for a good reason. Unlike most other photographic genres, I find street is very dynamic and demands on lighting and framing and focusing are very high. Automation is great if the camera can be sufficiently directed to understand the context. With street photography, it can be landscape, a fast-moving cyclist or a portrait, all in the space of seconds and with no warning. Automation requires exposure mode and focusing mode to be set correctly for the current chance to be taken well. And I've found that I'm not quick enough with the finger origami to be ready in time. Using manual allows me to preset the exposure until the circumstances change, such as sunlight being blocked, coming out or going into shadow. On days that are more lighting stable, I can resort to aperture priority. Manual focus, however, is all I use. Autofocus is rarely suitable for street. Framing a picture with the focus not being the closest object and not in the center of the frame means that autofocus must be directed with silly little buttons. Manual, on the other hand, is mind control. I think what I want and my hand simply reacts. This is far faster and allows me to remain framed for the picture whilst the focus point can be changed as it needs to be adjusted. Autofocus tracking points picks what it thinks is right, whereas I know what is right. When I pre-configure the suitable manual settings, I see that as my human version of automation. Timing of an image is often crucial. I find that compositional opportunities happen so fast that the difference between a great shot and a mess is often only fractions of a second. I spend time watching the speed people are moving. It could be a cyclist, a person walking, or someone doing something. Is the person smoking going to be out of frame before the next cloud of smoke? Is the cyclist going to be crossing in front of the contrast area just at the same time as a car will too? All these things impact the composition, and noticing speed, timing of actions, and predicting visual collisions helps to get stronger compositions. I decided a long time ago that I was not trying to create pictures that were better than other people's. I was trying to express and record what I saw. I wanted to express my interpretation of what is aesthetically pleasing to the scenes that I took. Critiques can at best measure their own viewer's subjective value of an image. They can never give a quantifiable judgment of the artist. A measurement of popularity and acceptability to audience, if you so will. I believe that in street photography, critiques are even more difficult than with other genres. Studio photography allows lighting, timing, exposure, color balance and everything 
to be in the control of the photographer slow time. Assuming the right kit and experience is available, there's no reason why the pictures are not perfect. The landscape is equally slow given that the photographer's woken up and prepared for their sunrise or sunset. Street photographers have no control of lighting, people, crowds, wind, clouds, sun, reflections or timing. So the results are based wholly upon the skills of the individual exploiting the moment the way they see it. I think we are forced to be ourselves and rely upon our skills and our experience. We should not worry when the viewer has no idea of the problems that were needed to be overcome to capture that moment. I hope that you found something useful and helpful in my tips and you can try them out as you develop your own style. I'll post more tips over time, so don't forget to subscribe.